The Holy Spirit is the key to fulfilling your calling. Here are five ways the Holy Spirit helps you to walk in divine destiny. Number one, He qualifies you. Many believers refuse to step into the call of God simply because they don't believe that they're qualified. Whether it be their past mistakes or their personal insecurities, they are afraid of stepping into the call of God because they don't feel like they have what it takes in order to do so. Here's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse number 13. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. What was their primary qualification for ministry? What was it that truly marked their lives? Simply put, they had been with Jesus. It's time in the presence of the Holy Spirit where you will find your calling. It's time in the presence of the Holy Spirit that produces the power to perform what God has destined for you to perform. It's not a matter of how gifted, talented, intellectual, or charismatic you are, but how surrendered you are to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit within you is your qualification. As you surrender your life to the Holy Spirit, as you spend time in His presence through prayer, the Word, and worship, something becomes transformed in you. Your character and your nature are changed. And in that transformation, God creates someone who can fulfill the divine mandate that He's placed on their life. That's you. As you spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit, He will qualify you. Write in the comment section that you're surrendering to the Holy Spirit. However you wanna phrase that, put it in the comment section right now. Number two, he gives direction and correction. Another excuse that believers run into is the excuse that they simply don't know what to do. I don't know what God wants from me, or I know what God has instructed me to do in the scriptures. I understand the general commands of God, living holy, living a lifestyle of worship, living a lifestyle of evangelism and so forth, but I'm not quite sure of what the Holy Spirit wants me to do specifically. And here we see that the Holy Spirit gives direction and correction. Acts chapter eight, I'm gonna read verses 27 to 31. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Here we see an opportunity for the presentation of the gospel. I think we complicate it. I think we complicate it by fretting over the specifics of our calling. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. The Holy Spirit will give you instruction. You might be saying, well then how do I hear the Holy Spirit? That's as simple as a lifestyle of prayer, the word, obedience, and listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Again, we complicate it because we don't know what direction we should go or we're worried because we're afraid that we might do something that he didn't call us to do. Well, the Holy Spirit has you covered there as well. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 7 says, Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then, coming to the borders of Mycenae, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. He guides as you go. He corrects as you obey. As you walk along that path of God's divine destiny, He'll correct the mistakes that you make. Many of us imagine that the call of God is so fragile that if we make one mistake or we do one thing that maybe He didn't instruct us to do specifically, that the whole thing's gonna fall apart, that we're gonna derail everything about the call of God in our lives. Now, that's not necessarily true, there are, but there are some mistakes, sinful ones, blatant sinful mistakes that you can make that of course can obviously delay what God is doing in your life. 
But I'm talking about the Christian who won't budge, who won't move, who won't do anything in their calling simply because they don't have specific instructions. Well, here we see that the apostle did not have the instructions to go to Asia. And we know he didn't have the instructions to go to Asia because on his way there, the Holy Spirit said, stop, don't go. So we see that the Holy Spirit, if we're listening for his voice, will correct our mistakes. This is why it's important that as we walk in the call of God, that we're attentive to his voice through prayer and the word. Stop complicating it. Fulfilling God's call is as simple as daily obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number three, here's how the Holy Spirit helps you walk in divine destiny. Number three, he gives power. Acts chapter one, verse eight says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here we see the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon the believers for the purpose of world evangelism. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he gives you power. Power to what? Power is for proclamation. It's power to evangelize. And this power comes in many forms. It's the power of the gospel. It's the power of healing miracles. It's the power of deliverance. It's the power of wonders. It's the power of spiritual gifts. That power backs God's purpose. Those miracles back God's message. God's wonders always back God's word. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to perform what God has anointed you to perform. So our first excuse, I don't know if I'm qualified. The Holy Spirit qualifies you if you'll simply spend time with him. The second excuse we make, well, I don't know what direction to go in and I'm afraid that I might make a mistake. Well, there the Holy Spirit gives direction and correction. He guides as we go. And then some of us might say, well, okay, maybe I've been qualified and I know where to go, but I'm not so sure of what to do. There's where he gives power. And when he gives you the power, he gives you performance of Ability to accomplish, to carry out, to expand the kingdom of God within the earth. The Holy Spirit brings power for the proclamation of the gospel. Number four, he gives you boldness. And to see this, we simply have to look at the life of Peter. Think about the fact that Peter denied the Lord Jesus. He denied that he even knew him. And in his denial, he felt shame and regret. Of course, the Lord forgave him. And of course, God greatly used his life even after that mistake. But notice something, that Peter was afraid to acknowledge that he knew the Lord in one instance. Yet in another instance, he's standing up publicly, boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. What was the difference? The difference was Pentecost. It was after Pentecost, it was after the giving of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that he was given such boldness that he was willing to stand before all and publicly declare the truth, even though many were offended by what he was saying. And the Bible says that 3,000 were added to their number that day. Imagine that. For every time that Peter denied Jesus, he saw a thousand people come to the cross on the day of Pentecost. That is the power of boldness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So you may say, okay, I, I understand he qualified me. I understand he gave me a direction to go in. I understand that he gives me the power to operate in, but I'm not so sure I have the boldness to actually step out. Well, again, the Holy Spirit has you covered there. The Holy Spirit gives you that boldness. He stirs the fire of God until you're like Jeremiah, where you say, I can't help but declare it because it's like fire shut up in my bones. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He gives you that boldness. I don't care if you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert. The Holy Spirit will give you boldness and that boldness will manifest as you step out in faith and obey the instructions he has given you. And finally, number five, he connects you with the right people. And to see this, we just have to look at the life of Paul the Apostle, formerly Saul. The Bible says here in Acts chapter nine, verse 10, now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. 
Verse 12, I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. So here we see that the Lord already spoke to Saul. The Holy Spirit already gave him instruction. He already told him that there was a man named Ananias who was coming to see him. Verse 13, But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. Verse 15, this is powerful. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. A couple things here. First of all, we see that the Holy Spirit spoke to both Ananias and Saul. He divinely connected them. He brought them together. He spoke to one and the other. The second thing to note here is that Ananias was afraid of connecting with Saul. Why? Because Saul had a reputation for violently persecuting the church. Ananias knew that Saul was a dangerous man who was against the way. Yet God, in verse 15, endorses Saul despite his past, despite what he had done to other brothers and sisters in the faith, despite how he fought the spreading of the gospel message, and zealously so, God endorsed him. God spoke well of him. His reputation preceded him, and Ananias was fearful. But then the Lord spoke one word and endorsed the man who once persecuted the church. Now, this is powerful because sometimes... People who will criticize you, speak ill of you, people who don't like you or like that you're walking in God's calling, they'll try to derail the call of God by spreading gossip and slander about you. But the reality is that even when your reputation is a bad one, God, in his one endorsement, can cause others to be drawn to you. Think about the fact that one word from God to Ananias changed his mind. God does that, you know. He endorses those with pasts, and he draws them together despite the gossip and the slander. Despite what other people are saying, God's going to make for you divine connections. The Holy Spirit will speak to his servants. The Holy Spirit will speak to God's children. The Holy Spirit in you recognizes the Holy Spirit in them. The Holy Spirit initiates both divine connections and divine disconnections. He qualifies you. He gives you direction and correction. He gives power. He gives boldness. He connects you with the right people. Now, Father, I pray for that one receiving this word now. And I ask, Lord, that you would begin to speak to them and cause them to listen for you intently, I pray. And even I sense a strong anointing here. I want you to receive this. Even now, I pray that the tangible touch of the Holy Spirit's power would come upon that life, come upon that one receiving this prayer now. Lord, I thank you that the past is forgiven. I thank you that you've empowered your servants. I thank you for divine connections. Holy Spirit, you are the key to fulfilling the call. And I pray now that you would have influence in their life. I pray, Lord, that they would learn to welcome the precious Holy Spirit. Help us to trust you, Holy Spirit to obey you, and to walk as you tell us to walk. I want you just to lift your hands right now. And I want you to say this. Say this to the Lord, not to me. Say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Say that out loud. Say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Now say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. I thank you, Lord, for this power flowing. Heal your people, deliver your people, empower your people by the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, if you enjoyed that message and you benefited from it and you want to help others benefit from it, it's very simple. Just leave a like on the video right now. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell when you do subscribe. I also want to ask you to consider today, right now, becoming a monthly ministry supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. 
A simple gift of $30 a month will help our ministry to continue to grow and to expand and to fulfill its mandate to win the lost and to disciple believers. Help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through events and media. The media is free, live streams are free, events are free, why? Because of generous people like you who love the Lord, who love the gospel, who love souls, and who believe in this ministry. That's how we can continue to do what we do. So go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Sign up for a monthly gift of any amount. You can also give a one-time gift of any amount. But any gift, large or small, one-time or monthly, helps us to spread the gospel. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. And now I want you to watch how to find God's perfect will for your life. In this teaching, I give you very practical biblical keys to discovering God's specific will for your life and ministry.